Hi everyone, my name is May Park. Welcome to another video tutorial on the Herowards blog and YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to color your floral images with colored pencils. This is my third time making a card with colored pencils, and here is my card that I create for the, my monthly Hero Release blog cup last week. If you are curious on how I made this card, check out the video tutorial on my blog. I just learned there is a special paper for colored pencils, but today I will be using Canson Excel watercolor paper instead. I'm cutting down my watercolor paper into 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inch using Timor's paper trimmer. This is the antique roses stem from Heroes that I'll be using today. It has quite large petals, so it's the great stem for coloring especially for colored pencil beginners. Here is my practice piece and I'll be using two coloring techniques today, burnishing and layering. Coloring with white colored pencil over the colored layers is the burnishing technique. Layering technique is great for creating an intense and textured look and burnishing technique is great for creating a soft and smooth look. I'm going to stamp the rose with Hero's Black Ink. I'm not going to worry about getting a perfect stamping impression because I'll trace the outlines with colored pencils at the end. I will stamp the rose one more time on a scrap paper and cut it out with my scissors to create a mask. I'm going to mask up my stamped image using removable adhesive. Masking technique is a great way to create the illusion of depth as the image you stamp first is in the foreground and the second image is partially behind the first image. Once I'm done stamping, I'm gonna remove the mask and move on to the coloring. When it comes to coloring with colored pencils, it's very important to keep your pencils sharpened. It will allow you to add more layers to your images. I'm applying my first layer with a very light purple color. I'm moving my pencil in small, circular motions. This technique is called scumbling. It helps you keep the shading tight and blend the colors very well. I'm going to apply the second color over the top of previous layer. Make sure to color your images with light pressure because too much pressure creates wax bloom or paper tooth disruption, which makes further layering impossible. To reserve some highlight area on my petal, I'm adding shading toward the center of my flower. Even though the main color of my flower is purple, I'll be adding some pink and blue to my flower images. I'll be using 10 different colors eventually. Now I'm going to turn on some music and speed up the coloring process. I'll be back once I'm done coloring.
I'm adding darker color towards the center of my flowers and where two petals meet together, making sure to leave some white spot. As you can see, I'm using a scrap paper underneath my right hand because I don't want to pick up some pigment from colored surface and transfer it to my white background. And I'm gonna trace outlines with Tuscan red colored pencil to enhance the outlines and make my flowers pop. You can stop coloring here if you want to, but I'll be burnishing my images by coloring with white colored pencil. I'm not gonna apply white color to all of the images because I wanna achieve two different looks on my flowers. It's time to add my sentiment. I'm pulling out stamps from the Thanks stamp set. Then I'm going to stamp my sentiments with the first fine onyx black ink using mini misty stamping tool. Here I have white cardstock measured at 4 and a quarter inch by 11 inch, and I'll be scoring at 5 and a half inch using my Stuart mini scoring board and Teflon bone folder to make an 8 side top folding card. Next, I'm going to attach my colored panel onto the A2 card base using tape runner. I was going to finish my card at this point, but I think the font and size of my sentiments didn't go with my colored flowers. So I decided to take off the panel from my card base and first cut the flowers with my scissors. I'm using a black marker to color the edge of my panel to achieve a finished look. I have a few 8 size cardstock in different colors and I'm matching them with my panel to see which color would go with my purple flowers. And I decide to use the white wood grain cardstock for my card base. I'm going to mount my panel on the A2 card base using foam tape. I'm prepping my black cardstock with anti-static powder to prevent any stray powder from sticking to unwanted areas while heat embossing. When I'm not sure about which sentiment will go with my card design, I always pull out several sentiments from different stamp sets. So I'm going to ink up several stamps with Versamark watermark ink and stamp them on the paper. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some Hero's white embossing powder over the sentiments and tap the excess powder off my cardstock. I'm using my small paintbrush to flick away any stray powder. Then I'll heat set the sentiments with my heat tool until they are completely melted. By the way, the final sentiment I chose is from the egg salon stamp set. I'll be mounting my sentiment strip on the card front using foam tape. I'm finishing off my card by adding some clear sequins. I didn't film the video, but I also added some black dots on the center of each flower by applying black animal accents. Do you think I made a good decision cutting out my flowers and mounting the panel on the white card base? Or do you like the previous one layer card? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. That's all for today. If you have any questions, please leave comments below and I will be happy to answer them for you. I hope this video tutorial inspires you to create a card with colored pencils. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye-bye!